Wow, that is loud. I'm not used to talking on a microphone, so this is, this is going to be interesting. Um, OK, so um, I am Sharon, and I'm going to be presenting this workshop today. And I'm just, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Um, so a great thing about the tech industry is that there is a ton of disruption and innovation. Un unfortunately, there isn't a lot of that happening on the communications end. And I am just as guilty as the next marketer uh, and communicator um, of falling into the pride and true methods to get my points across. Um, as you can tell, I have a speech impediment. I, I stutter. And it has made a lot of choices for me in my own life. I chose to be a writer because I was a lot more comfortable with the written word as opposed to obviously talking to people. Um, I chose to be a for, 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 for freelancer because anytime I would go to a j -j 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 job interview, I would become just engulfed with, with so much anxiety that I wouldn't be able to hit a word out, even my name, as you guys could tell a couple of seconds ago. And I chose a lot of times to be silent, even though I knew I could add value to the conversation. And uh, value is a word that I'm going to be talking about a lot today. And I'm also going to be talking about m -m 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 marketing as well. These are key points, and, and uh, they are going to make a lot more sense as time as, uh, Regresses. So after 10 years as a writer, um, with about eight of them in the um, business and m -m 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 marketing capacity, I have uh, learned a couple of things about um, what companies think they need to do to get their eyes on their brand. Um, they talk a lot about uh, mobile strategy and SEO, um, hashtags and social impact, and um, of course, Facebook and Twitter, and also branding. But um, the problem with um, that word is that a lot of companies have have trouble being themselves and exposing their flaws as I am doing right now. Think about it. When was the last time when you had an idea for a m -m 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 marketing plan and you scratched it off the list because it exposed a weakness? 
it probably happens a lot more often than you think, especially when you are in an early stage company and you are working with limited means. You stick with um, what you know. Today, I want to ch 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 challenge you to abandon your, s your s strengths and explore the things that you consider to be a w w w w weakness. So often, we consider weakness and out as n -n 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 negatives. They walk hand in hand, but those feelings aren't n -n 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 necessarily a bad th 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 thing. The Italian intellectual, and I'm probably going to butcher his name, Eugenio Calorni, um, said that out is creative because it allows for alternative ways to see the world. Um, what if you applied that to your company's brand or even your personal brand? I love to read and, and one of my favorite authors is Haruki Murakami. He actually uses a form of weakness in his writing. The um, Atlantic um, actually uh, wrote about him and talked about how no other writer writes as many bad sentences as he does. And if you've read any of his books, you will understand that. His writing is compelling because of the storytelling. And, and uh, that's another concept that um, we'll be uh, talking a lot more about. Um, the plots take you from supernatural to reality almost in the same paragraph. It's bizarre. It's disjointed. It's often written choppily or long winded, but it works. He's marketed himself by using poor sentences to his advantages. And now he's one of the great writers of our time. And, um, and um, that's another tip. Y um, you can s stand out by being unequivocally and imperfectly who you are. Always remember that sometimes your greatest vulnerability can be your most v v v valued asset. And Kevin Plank, who is the um, founder of Under Armour, he understands this incredibly well. Um, the first rule of his formula for innovation design is 
to do one thing really well. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, that's what he hid. For the first f f f f f f f five years of Under Armour, they only had one product, and it was their compression T-shirt. For me, in my business, it was writing in all forms. I covered editorial, and then I went over to business, and then I um, eventually landed in marketing. That built credibility. And and once you have that under your belt, you can begin to grow from there. Um, for you, it could be devoting time to a couple of platforms that you know will work, and then disrupting and innovating um, from there. My personal disruption was um, doing this. It was speaking. I began speaking about a year ago as a way to break out of my shell. I was terrified to talk to people one on one. And obviously, I was even more terrified to do anything that compared to um, what I'm doing now. So once I put myself out there, my, my biggest f -f 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 fear, my strongest vulnerability, and my greatest out, I realized that I was connecting with people in a real way. It's a lot easier to connect with your audience, whether it be a, um, a larger group like this one or in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, if if they know that you are flawed as well. So the question that I'm going to pose to you today is um, what's your disruption? What is the one thing that terrifies you, that w w w worries you, that makes you um, vulnerable? What ch 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 challenges you to the point of being uh, afraid? That's where your sweet spot is. That is what is going to capture your target target audience and make you stand out. People are 
probably going to tell you that you need to be the strongest communicator to succeed. But sometimes the truth is that you have to be the most transparent one. All right, so now we're going to get into our first exercise. And um, I w w w w want you guys to pair up. Um, I think there's probably enough people to do this in pairs. Um, and I want you to talk about an area in your professional l l life that you consider a w w w weakness. And um, can give you some a, a, a examples of that. Um, it could be like talking to a boss about something. It could be trying to connect w w w w w with a coworker or um, it could be um, trying to explain a technical concept to a non-technical person. And then um, after you've talked about that, um, also talk about a time when that uh, weakness kind of overcame you and caught the test of you. So you're going to do this in pairs, um, preferably um, with a person that you don't already n n n n n know. So you may have to kind of, I don't know, travel around the room a little bit in order to make this work. So I'll give you guys like 10 minutes. All right, so we're going to wrap this up, just this exercise. Um, OK, so how did it go? Talking about a thing that you don't consider to be positive. How did it feel? Go ahead. You know, I found that conversation to be a lot less shallow than most of my conversations. Really? A little more deep, because like you said, it, it kind of helps you open up a little bit, uh, uh -huh. or helps you relate to someone else who is also weak in areas. And Matt here pointed out, you know, uh, in the tech industry, we all tend to feel somewhat inadequate in some, if not many areas. <laughs> so I thought that was great. <laughs> Who needs church? <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, yeah we, were, we were kind of joking. It's like, oh, that's, that's quite an icebreaker. It's like, you know, talk about something that you're terrible at, right? You know, it's not like, oh, where are you from or whatever, but it definitely was like, oh, let's actually talk about these things here. Yeah, like a real, like, have a real conversation with someone. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I mean, that's a really good job. I mean, I don't know if I would be able to do this exercise after being in a workshop for 10 minutes, and I'm presenting the workshop, so lucky me. But uh, yeah, that's, oh, go ahead. I was say, it's actually easier to talk to somebody that's a total stranger. I don't think that I can talk like that to members of my team necessarily. Yeah, that makes sense. You know. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's actually a good, uh, segue into um, um, the next part. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to talk to your team easier about anything after this. That's the goal, how to talk to humans. So yeah. Um, before I go on, does anybody else have anything that they wanted to add? We're all friends here now. So good? Good. OK. So. The first thing that you guys have to know about communicating with other people is that 
everybody is exactly like you, right? Like everybody wants to be liked. Even right now, I, I like I want you guys to think I am awesome, that I'm interesting, and that I'm f f f f f funny, and that I'm the coolest person here. Like, yeah, like that's just who we are as people. Our brains are wired to connect. Um, we, it's how we've gotten this far in, in evolution, is the, 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 Talking about um, the thing that made you vulnerable, you, even at that moment, probably attempted to present it in a way um, that still kind of puts you in a positive light. But um, what you're forgetting in your own insecurity is that the other person has the exact same need as you. As, as you were opening yourself up to them, the, 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 they who needed you to to like them as well. And I understand this um, very well because of stuttering. As I'm struggling to get words out, even right now, I tend to feel like I am in a position of weakness here. All of you guys actually hold all of the power, you know? Like, all of you guys could just decide, like, okay, I'm over this, and all of you guys are just gonna walk out and leave, and I feel like, okay, well, I'm up here, and you guys can choose, like, by Sharon, and then that would be kind of the end of that. And in situations like this one, where there is a communications power and talents, um, our insecurities about how we communicate with each other always kind of come to the surface. Um, an example of this would be when you are talking to an angry investor. They have given you hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you're lucky, they've given you millions of dollars and they you know, have to have these answers immediately about you know, how you are spending um, their money. So, 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 so what types of physical reactions do we have anytime we feel like we are in a situation like that. Um, I can give you an example. I was running late this morning and I immediately started a sweating, which I know is a very attractive thing to think about right now. But, but yeah, like we get hot and, and 
Um, a lot of us tend to um, sp um, speed up our speech or, or we have problems articulating ourselves. We have these reactions because we perceive the other person as holding all of the power. But again, you have to always come back to the fact that the other person, and it doesn't matter the role that they play, they still have that basic need for you to l l l l like them. Because that's who we are at our roots. We are people who have to be accepted by everyone else. So when you do have moments like that, just remember that everyone in every social situation is a little bit um, vulnerable because our basic human instinct is always going to kick in. Okay, so now that we know that the other person is exactly like us, um, we need to know how to use this to our ad 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 advantage. All right. So there are two types of communicators. All right. Um, there are the intelligent informers and the social relators. All right. Again, they both want the same thing, um, but how they go about it is completely different. And one of the ways is always going to trump um, the other way. All right, so I'm going to begin with the um, intelligent informer. Um, this is a person who is going to try to show you how awesome they are by trying to impress you. Um, an example of this, and I don't want to offend anyone, I have done it before and it's awesome and it's great, um, are the people who do CrossFit and who absolutely love it. They talk about it incessantly. I have abs, I can run a mile in two minutes, I can lift blah, 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 and it's like that's really great that it's helping you, however, how is this going to help me, right? How is this gonna add any value to my life? How is your love of this one thing going to help me? It's not, right? And, and, and that's the problem with this approach. It's a very me focused approach to it. And it can backfire for obvious reasons, um, but mainly because y you aren't um, um, v v v v v v valuing um, the person who is on the r r r receiving end. 
And that brings us to the social relator. And their goal is to make the other person feel valued, right? They try to learn about other people. They try to um, support other people. And the bottom line is they listen. Um, I actually read a really great quote about Richard Ranson. Um, it was by a person who has, um, who has um, spent a lot of time around him. And he says that he always listens a lot more than he talks. When you think about a person who a lot of people consider to be uh, ch 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 charming and charismatic, I'm sure that the first thing that comes to everyone's mind is how they talk to people. But that is, but that's actually not how they're presenting themselves. It's um, they actually sell at 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 valuing the listener. Um, they uh, look into your eyes when you speak. They um, use their um, they uh, respond to the silent cues that you give them. And they hear what you have to say, and they only interject when they know that they can add um, value. And we call this empathy. Um, if you want to know the basis of how to talk to another person, empathy is it. Um, I mean, all of you guys have a lot of empathy right now because you are here um, hearing everything that I have to say, even though I am at times having a really difficult time, you know, actually saying it. Um, okay, so now we're going to get into the next exercise. Um, um, okay, I want you to find another person in, in, in the room who you haven't talked to yet. And then um, I just uh, w w w want you to ask them a couple of questions. And it can be um, about anything, but if you want to make it, you know, um, um, like business-like, then um, you could um, ask them about, like, um, um, their job or their company, and um, uh, um, you could also, like, ask them, about their favorite part of their job, okay? And, and the goal here is truly to just talk to a new person and kind of keep in mind how you are talking to them and 
l -l 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 listening to them, all right? So I'll give you another eight to 10 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. All right, so how did it go? Did you enjoy this? Was this weird? You did, you enjoy, yes. <laughs> um, does anybody have any comments about what they, go ahead. Uh, I was trying to listen to this person. Uh, what about the names? And I find that while I'm listening to what he has to say, in the middle of it, I'm trying to come up with my next thing for me to say instead of listening. I was trying to cut myself off, but it's kind of hard to concentrate to me. I don't know, maybe my OCD. <laughs> yeah, well, um, it's a lot easier when you, like, we're always, like, telling people about ourselves, and we're always giving other people clues about us. And so if you just kind of, like, take the information that he gives you, and then you can turn that into questions. Like, there's always more things to, you know, ask. Yeah, but while, while I'm digesting the information, I'm not listening to his next thing, and then I'm like, oh, what? Oh, wow. Well. Oh. It takes practice, you know, lots of practice, but I'm sure that you'll get it. Yeah, that, that happens to me a lot, too. Like, especially when someone's talking to you, the pressure's on. At least if, in my mind, it feels like the pressure's on. It's like, what am I going to say? Like, and then you forget where the conversation is, and then the pressure is actually on you to be, and you lost your, your spot, and then your, your fear has come into actuality, and it's just like, damn. Okay. <laughs> I'm not the only one. That's great. For me, it's uh, easy talking about technology or something. I know we both, I know that uh, I like always do something to add, mm -hmm. uh, to continue, but uh, it's small talk. It's uh, very difficult for Small me. Small talk's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> serious. Yeah, well, a thing that I like to do is um, I just like to keep asking people uh, questions until I hit on a thing that they are, like, in love with. And then it's a lot easier to have a conversation when the other person feels like 100% comfortable, therefore you um, feel the same way. It's another thing that you guys can spend the next, you know, hair or two just practicing, you know. Active listening is harder than talking, but you can do it, I promise. Go ahead. I have a slightly dissenting opinion on small talk. Um, okay. I'm not from here, so I'm not native. Can you speak up, sorry? Sorry. I'm not a native English speaker, and when I came here uh, to, to live with a student five years, six years ago, I was much more shy in my native language than I am. And actually, if I go back to France, like, I, I'm not nearly as outspoken in French as I am in English uh -huh. because of small talk. <laughs> These French people don't like small, small, small talk that much. It's like, I don't know what you And it's small talk versus in supermarkets in Florida, where it was just like that conversation with random people with like so many varied backgrounds. I ended up practicing uh, listening because I, what, I didn't really care about what I was about to say because I didn't have no agenda. It was just like waiting. It was kind of freeing to just be like, and or to make them repeat something when I wasn't sure. So I screwed up so much in small talk that I had to clear talk with people I actually cared about uh, later. You've single-handedly changed my opinion on small talk. <laughs> but yeah, but that's awesome. And again, it takes a lot of practice to be able to do this on the go. But you guys are all very, very um, intelligent, so I know you can make this work. Go ahead. Yeah, well, in the beginning, it is going to be uncomfortable because um, every conversation kind of has its own uh, wavelength. And so in, in the beginning, it's gonna be weird because you haven't um, 
figured out like how the um, balance is going to be and like how the f -f 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 flow of the conversation is. And so it is going to be awkward, but um, um, the goal is to, to um, have the other person f -f 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 feel um, um, uh, v v v valued, and as l l l l l as l l l l long as that happens, then everything is okay. And we're going to talk a little bit more about getting your point across in a couple of minutes, if we have time. Then, then we do. So yeah, go ahead. I was just going to comment, it doesn't always have to be equal. Some people like to talk more, and some people don't like to talk like exactly. myself. Yeah. And so, <laughs> considering how much I'm talking up in this talk, uh, <laughs> you don't believe me, but in a conversation, that's typically how it goes. And I, and I like it when the other person carries more of the conversation. Yeah. So that, that can be OK. Yeah. Again, you know, it's a really great point. Go ahead. It was uh, it was nice that it was under your direction that when you spoke to these other people in those tests and the most popular part of the small talk, I would have never spoken to the boys before and I instructed us to do that. Yeah. It would be nice if you could follow us all around. And um, that happens. And in your personal life, okay, great. I never have to talk to this person again. But like professionally, you have to make a way, you know? So even if it's awkward and even if it's like, I really don't want to talk to this person, you have to, even then, even more, value them because you need them, right? In order to get things done. <laughs> I was going to give you questions, but I'm like, no, it'll be way more fun for them to come up with their own because it'll be like a real life, you know, thing. So, yeah, um, what kind of questions did you guys ask each other? If you don't mind saying that. What is your passion? Oh, wow. Just out the gate. What is your passion? <laughs> Let's get real. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. It is, because it immediately like has the other person talking about a thing that they are just like, I can talk about this for hours, and then they want to talk to you more, and they think you're charming because you and that's exactly how you have to play it. You have to make it easy for the other person, especially in a professional way. Like you have to, you know, just make things easy. Anybody else want to share a question? Go ahead. Okay, yeah, that's a good question, and that can turn into an open-ended one where you guys could talk about a lot of things as a result of that. So, yeah, that's a good question, too, especially at a place like this. Anyone else? Go ahead. What did you do last night? <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 we found out we were last night. <laughs> 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 well, okay, yeah, good. Another great question. I've actually never asked that question. I'm going to try that one next time. I'm at a networking event. Really? What did you do last night? Hey, there is nothing wrong with like eating Thai food and watching Netflix. That's what I did last night. <laughs> Go ahead. That are not what? Yes or no replies. Sorry, I, I'm so yes far. Yes or no replies? So I, can't, I don't know how to ask a question that's just a, oh, yes. Yes, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, because those conversations can end really quickly. Are you having a good time? No. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Like, that's it. I mean, I'll follow it up, too. Like, and I talk to my son a lot about what he does at school. So I say, hey, how was school today? Oh, school was good. What was good about it? Mm -hmm. 
You sound like my mom. <laughs> no, but it works, but it works. That's, that's, that's another good one. Yeah, always ask more questions. Anybody else? I asked, um, what technique do you use to, to keep on, uh, to keep learning and, and keep learning all the, the latest and greatest things about Rails and, and development? Good one. And I think she asked me, uh, what, what do I like most about Rails? Yeah. Those sound like great questions. I don't know anything about development, so I'll take your word for it that that led to great places. <laughs> All right. Well, again, like awesome questions. Um, the whole goal, like overall goal, is to just have it be a lot easier to build a, um, a uh, relationship very quickly, all right? And so if anybody else has anything to say, no one? Cool. Um, we're going to go into the last part, and this will be quick because we only have 20 minutes. So, um, um, yeah, now uh, I want to talk to you guys about just building a um, relationship and how to sh 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 shape your own m m m m m m m message, all right? So I know that um, I've talked about um, um, vulnerability and um, I've also talked to, um, a lot about marketing. And I know that you guys were probably thinking that this doesn't have anything to do with the uh, workshop. And actually, it does, because marketing is talking um, to people. It's about connecting with your ideal audience and talking to them in a way um, that will compel them to take action. All right, so how do you compel a person to take action? Well, it's all about how you shape your message, all right? And a lot of founders are pretty good at this on their own, and they didn't even know it. Right, because if you talk to a person who has a uh, startup and you ask them um, how it came to be, um, they always have a a story to tell. It's not just. You know, I had an an idea, and so I decided to create Twitter. No, it's I was at my house, and I I had um, this problem, and I was trying to find a solution, and there wasn't a solution, and so I went and created it. Right? And that way is compelling because it encourages whoever is listening to hang around and hear how the narrative ends, all right? And, and, 
And that's how I want you to view building a, a um, relationship. It isn't about trying to sell a person on on yourself, but it's about presenting yourself in a compelling way so that people on the um, on the receiving end will hang around, right? Um, it's about being charming. It's about asking questions. And then at the very end, it's about telling your compelling story. And it could be a lot like mine. Um, that heap um, um, vulnerability has made me uh, stand out um, for better or or for worse. Or um, it could be that you have an idea um, that will change how other people um, uh, do, 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 do things, right? Just remember, it's all about how you present it to um, another person, all right? Okay, so we don't really have a whole lot of time left, so this, after this workshop, um, uh, whoops, after this exercise, um, you guys can just um, head out. Or if you wanted to head out early, I understand, because we only have about 10 minutes left. Um, but um, 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 the next thing that I want you to do, either uh, today or tomorrow, is um, anytime you talk about your your company or your hobby or your passion or um, anything else, I w w w w w w w want you to consider how you are for 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 framing it, right? So. Here's a hypothetical. Um, you have a um, technical issue that you um, are trying to explain to a non-technical person, okay? So a way that you could do that is, is to explain how that technical issue helped another person and in turn how helping them could help the person that you are talking to now. Does that make sense? I don't know if I explained that very well. Not really, okay. So, um, who can I use as an example? Who wants to come up here and explain to me what they do? <laughs> just, just a hobby. All right, come on. You've already been up here once. <laughs> Lies. Nobody else wanted to come up here, so. Okay, hi. Okay, so we've already talked before, and you're awesome. So thank you for coming up here. Um, okay, so what do you do for a living? Oh, and you get a microphone. I am a developer at onsite.com, and we do online leasing for apartments. So 
uh, apartment communities that want to screen their applicants and do background checks, e-sign the leases, make everything electronic, get rid of all the paperwork. And I'm a developer there and help make things go. You help make things go. Okay. Um, um, you have any hobbies that you like? Yes. Um, I should have asked, what hobbies do you like? Sorry, <laughs> not taking I, my own advice here. Uh, interesting, uh, unique hobby, I guess nowadays anyway. I played Dance Dance Revolution a lot. Um, How did you get started doing that? A long time ago, I had a friend who, uh, who had it at his house, and we played, and we're terrible. And then I, one day I went to the arcade and saw how people really danced, and uh, that, then I was able to copy that and get a little bit better. But then since then, I've uh, co been in competitions, um, oh, wow. won some of them. But uh, anyway, so I've got a, a dance arcade set up at my house now, and do, that's my regular exercise. So it's fun. Okay, he's not a fair example for a lot of reasons. One, because he works for a company that is obviously very needed. But two, Dance Dance Revolution, like, I'm never going to forget that. There's competitions, you guys. I did not know that. Not many anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you were going to tell a person about um, Hans Dance, uh, uh, revolution, like, how, how um, would you explain it to them? Like <laughs> well, how... Okay, so yeah, maybe does, everyone doesn't know that game. Um, it's, a, a, it's a video game with music and arrows coming up the screen that you're supposed to dance to the beat to on a panel on the floor. Four buttons, up, down, left, and right. Except I play with all eight, two players, so it's more like this. <laughs> ah. Does that, is that good? <laughs> that was just very interesting. <laughs> yeah, well, so, okay, so how you talked about it, like, it was obviously um, um, uh, something that you are extremely interested in and extremely involved in. And now, as a result, like, I didn't know anything about Dance Dance Revolution. I had heard of it, but I didn't really care about it. But now I'm like, okay, this is interesting. And me being the type of person I am, I'm going to go online and find out about these competitions and see the winners. Are you on the internet? Like, does your picture and stuff? Not for Dance Dance. He's on YouTube for sure. I'm going to YouTube you. Um, I'm Nilbus online, N-I-L-B-U-S. But um, I was just going to say, if you want to try Dance Dance, you might want to try it with, I don't, wait, what am I saying? I don't know. It might be slightly embarrassing the first time you try it um, because it's not easy. But it, just have fun and uh, don't be shy. <laughs> they have them at some arcades still. Yeah. That is very cool. Mm -hmm. So you actually did tell us a, a um, story about you, if you realize it. You, I, we talked about how you, um, you um, found it. We talked about how you were bad at it. We talked about how you became good and that you do competitions and that you do eight. At the same, eight, four, four players, eight players? Two players, eight buttons on the floor. Two uh -huh. players, eight buttons on the floor, yes. And now you've also invited us to play. So this is actually a really good example. So you actually like told us everything about this one part of your life in a compelling way. Does that make sense? <laughs> I just realized you you're that? right. This is being recorded, and I am on YouTube. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's okay. I'm on YouTube too. It's for a good reason. For a good cause. All in good fun. Yes. So, is this a thing that you guys think that is doable sometime? I mean, even right now, if you want to like 
try to do it now for something that you are really like interested in and passionate about, or you know, just by the end of the conference. I want you to be able to just have an entire conversation, and then also at the um, 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 very end, to what he just did, which was very brave. And thank you for coming up here. <laughs> All right, so you can either hang out now and do the workshop. We don't have too much time left, or you guys can go. And I just want to say that this was awesome. This was uh, the only time I've ever done a workshop like this, so this was a very nerve-wracking experience. And you guys were really patient and awesome and empathetic. And I hope that you all learned something and that you um, feel a lot more confident and empowered to go up to a new person and know that you you can build a uh, relationship with them pretty quickly so thank you <laughs>